please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or max scholarships 2020. This problem is from the 2020 mathematics questionnaire for the specialized training scholarships. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. Problem 2. A trapezoid on a plane satisfies AB equals 5, BC equals 6, CD equals 3, AC equals 4, and AB is parallel to CD. Let O denote the intersection of AC and BD. Fill in the following blanks with the correct numbers. The first question asks us for the cosine of this angle here. And we notice that we know this side, we know this side, and we know this side. That means we can use the cosine law. In the cosine law, C here and C here are opposite each other. So C is the angle here, and this small c is the, is the line segment here. That's the length of this line segment. And A and B could be anywhere between this or this. And in our case, let's just say that cosine C is this angle. C is, of course, this length, which is 4. And let's choose A to be this bit here, which is we know to be 5. And B to be this bit here, which we know to be 6. And if we just plug in all these values in the cosine law, we get this expression, and so we can actually obtain cosine of C, which is 3 fourth. So we write that there. Now we need to find BD. So that is this side. And we notice that we are given this side and this side. Now let's just find this angle so that we can actually use the cosine law to find BD. So let's use the cosine law. And to find this angle, we notice that we have two parallel lines, CD and AB. And this angle here is actually corresponding to this angle here, and they are complementary. So to be more precise, this angle actually corresponds to the other angle here, if we extend this parallel, or rather this transversal. This angle is equal to this angle. And because we have a line from here to here, the angle, this whole angle from here to here must be 180 degrees. And therefore, the remaining angle, which is the angle that we're looking for, is actually 180 minus the given angle, this angle, which is actually equal to this angle. So we can find cosine C. So if we define this to be cosine C here, then because we know that this angle cos this angle c is actually 180 minus this angle here okay 180 minus this which is equal to this we can get the cosine of c to be cosine of 180 minus this angle but we know that if you have this kind of of expression inside the cosine function you can just remove the 180 and replace it with a negative sign outside and again we can we can imagine that from the definition of cosine which is in the unit circle if you have the angle here so if this is your angle and you have 180 minus that angle then the, because this is 180 here so minus that angle would be around here and cosine is just the x component of of this unit radius so this is the cosine in here so it's positive now it's it's here so that is negative when we do a 180 minus the angle and and so we already know cosine of abc to be 3 4 so just replace that so cosine of c is therefore negative 3 4 and now we just plug in all the values to this or in this equation and these are the values again and so if we plug them all we get c squared and we can actually get the square root of that, which gives us 6 square root of 2.
now we need to find the area of this triangle here. And because we have three sides, we can actually use Heron's formula. But I'm not a fan of Heron's formula because we have to compute semi parameters and all that. So I'm preferring to actually use the one half side times side times the sine of this angle here because we already know the cosine of this angle here anyway. So to use that, again, what we're using is, is the relationship that area is equal to one half, one side times the other side and the sine of the angle. And let, let A be this side here, which is five. And then this side is BC, which is six. And okay, this is, we, we just put this here for completeness. So AC equals four. Now the cosine of C, meaning the cosine of this angle is three fourths. And we know the relationship between sine and cosine from the Pythagorean identity. That's sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And therefore, if we solve for sine squared, we get the sine squared of C equals one minus the square of this, which is nine over 16, and that gives us seven over 16. And then we can say that the square root of that sine of C is just square root of seven over four. Now we can just plug this in in here, and we already have A and B. And when we do that, we get this value, 15 square root of 7, 4. Now we need to find the angle ACD, or rather the sine of that angle. And to do that, we will actually need the sine law. The sine law states that if you have a triangle such that the sides are called a, B, and C, and the angles opposite them are called capital A, B, and C, respectively, then this relationship holds. So this holds for any triangle. And now we notice that we know a lot of things about triangle A, B, C because we've done questions one, two, and three. And we notice also that the angle that we're concerned with, this angle here, is equal to the angle here. That's because we have a transversal AC. And again, that's because AB is parallel with DC and therefore the angle here is equal to the angle here. So that's from being a transversal. And for convenience, let's call our angle, this angle, let's call that angle theta. And of course, this will also be angle theta. And the sine B, now we can use the sine law because we have we have this side, we have this side, and we have the sine of this side. So we are just looking for the sine of this side. So in our notation, let's call that the sine B that's, that, that we're looking for. So sine B is actually the sine of theta. So that's what we're looking for. And the B is the opposite side. So BC, which is, which is known to be six. And sine A, so sine A, let's call this sine A here. So that's the sine A from here. So let's just have that to be sine of ABC. And we already know that to be square root of seven over four. And that's from question three. And then lastly, AC, which we already know to be four. So we just plug in these values into the first two parts of the, of the series of equalities here. And we can actually get the value for sine B. So let's do that. So here we just plugged in the values and the unknown is only sine B. And we just manipulate that a bit and we get 3, 8 times square root of 7. Here we are asked for the ratios of areas. So we are getting the ratio of the area of this triangle to that of this triangle to that of this triangle to that of this triangle. And when we're talking about ratios in triangles, similarity is a very useful concept. Similarity means that this, the corresponding ang angles are equal and the corresponding sides of those two triangles are proportional. So to check for similarity, we have something called AA, which is, as we mentioned earlier, um, something to do with the angles being equal and SSS, which has something to do with the sides being proportional, and also SAS, which means that if you have two sides 
corresponding sides that are proportional, and you also have an included angle, included meaning the angle between the two sides, and if you have that included angle to be equal, the other included angle, then you also have similar triangles. And we will use that in this problem. We see that by AA using this, this triangle is actually similar to this triangle. And that means that means we can say a lot of things about the proportionality of their sides. And the reason we think they're they are similar is because of AA. That means we know two angles to be equal. So this angle, for example, is equal to this angle. That's because they are vertical angles of two intersecting lines. And this angle has also been shown to be equal to this angle, again, because they are transversals, rather because AC is a transversal of these parallel lines here. So now we have two angles of your triangle, of your triangles that are equal, and therefore they are similar. Now, if they are similar, then we can make the following proportions. So if we know this angle to be A, then the corresponding, or rather if we know this side to be A, then the corresponding side in this triangle, which is this, is also, is also A times some proportionality constant. Likewise, if this is B, then the corresponding side on this triangle, which is this side, would also be K times B. And if we know this side to be C, then this side, which is the corresponding side, would be the proportionality constant K times C. So the, these things we learn just from knowing that this triangle here is actually similar to the other triangle, this triangle. And if we know that, then we can actually find K. So notice that we already know B, right? B is five from here and we also know cd which which is equal to kb in our notation so cd is three so b this is to this kb is equal is just equal to one is to k and we already know that that the first the first term is five and the second term is three and so we have this proportion and if we solve for k it's just the the inner terms multiply them equals the the product of the outer terms which is three and we can solve for k to be three fifths so we've used this formula for the area in the previous problems and that's for 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 this triangle now what about for the next triangle bco so let's use again the same formula so we have one half times one of the sides so this side times this side, so that's Ka times the sine of this side, or, or rather of this angle. But this angle is actually supplementary to the angle here, to the angle AOB, AOB, which we already used in the in the area of, of ABO here. So if they're supplementary, then that means this is 180 minus the angle here. That's why we have it here. And if you have 180 minus the angle, if you get the sine of that, it's just the same as the sine of the angle itself. Again, this will be clear if you draw the unit circle and convince yourself that actually sine is just the vertical component of your, of your unit radius. And so we can compute the, ang the area to be K, that's the K there, times the area of ABO. And that's easy, easily noticeable when you solve this. So one half C K A sine of the angle here. And you will see that this is, this is in fact the relationship between those two. And next we look at this area here. And again, that's one half times this side, which is K A, this side, which is K C. So we get one half K squared AC. And again, the angle here, which is just equal to the angle AOB in here. So that's again, sine of AOB. And we already know the value for one half AC sine AOB. So we know the value of one half AC sine AOB. We replace that with ABO. And this is what we get for, for the triangle CDO.
So we just move the k squared outside. And lastly, for the last triangle here, we do the same thing. We get 1 half times this side times this side, which is a times kc. So if you multiply that all together, that's 1 half kac. And times sine of 180, again 180 minus the angle AOB. And we already mentioned that if you have 180 minus the angle, and if you get the sine of that, it's the same as the sine of just the angle. And so we are left with 1 half KAC sine of the angle, which is very similar to this again, with an extra K. So we can write it like K times ABO. And now we can see that we can actually get the ratio of this to this to this to this. And that's just 1 is to k is to k squared is to k. And we already know k to be 3 fifths. So that's 1 is to 3 fifths is to 925 is to 3 fifths. But in the given, the second term is actually 15. So how do we make this 15? 3 fifths here must be multiplied by 25. So if you multiply the, the second term by 25, you will get 15. And so we have to multiply everything by 25 to get 25 here. And here we get 15. Now we get 9 here. And here we get 15 again. And that's how we got these numbers. Now we are asked to find the scalar product of the vectors CD and CA. So let's recall that the scalar product can be computed by getting the product of the magnitudes of the given vectors. So the magnitude or the length of this times the length of this times the cosine of the angle between them. So angle ACD. And we already know the side length. So CD is given to be three. CA is given to be four. Now we just need to know the cosine of ACD. However, we know from problem four, the sine of ACD. So let's use that. Because the sine of ACD and the cosine of ACD are related by the Pythagorean identity, and we covered that in a previous problem here, previous question, we can get the cosine to be the square root of 1 minus the sine squared. So we have the value for this already. And so we just replace the sine there with a given value, which is square root of 7 over 8. And so we obtain cosine of the angle to be 1 8. Now we just plug this in, this expression, and we obtain 3 halves. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!